Welcome back. We're going to continue working on the game. And today we are going to focus on some yeah, some polishing, but not for the game itself, but for some of our tools or for for yeah, for some of our components that we use in the in the editor. Okay. So let's um yeah, let's first do uh, let's first do a recap of what we've done uh, last time. We let's see what what have we done. Yeah, so there are two important things that we've uh, we've done last time. Uh, so the first one is the fact that we now have um, visual feedback for the for the laser weapon. So actually we have to wait for, let's kill this one. We have to wait for some real enemies to show up. Right about now, there we go. So now I have this visual feedback. There's a line that goes from the, from the tower itself to the enemy that it's targeting. So nothing extremely fancy. And the second thing that we've done is this wanna be crystal at the top at the top of the tower which um what it does uh, so or why is it a bit special is that it reacts to 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 its to the health of the tower so we'll see in a bit that when the enemies reach the top the the crystal yeah it looks like it's uh, um yeah, the, 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 the there's like it's. I I I don't have the word. The the reverse of uh, of uh, filling up. Um, yeah, but it has this effect, and it's it's just uh, for now it's just a placeholder. Um, we we have no idea actually how we want it how we want it to look in the in the final game. Okay, so that's it for the recap. And now let's have a look a bit of uh, at what we are going to do today. So there are actually, in this order, there are three main topics that we're gonna touch on and maybe we're gonna do some, some other th stuff uh, after that. So the first one is we wanna do a, we wanna do a change to the to the spline component that we have we need to to do something uh, here for um, yeah to help the, the level designer better uh, create splines and i'm gonna show it right away because this is the first thing that we're gonna work on the second thing is just a small thing um i'm gonna to, i'm going to make a prefab for the yeah for the path you know we have the um the, the game object has the spline and the line renderer for displaying the for displaying the path and I'm going to make a uh, a prefab for that and we're gonna use the same prefab in all um, in all modules and the third thing uh, the third thing that we're gonna work on today is um, an inspector for the tower modules so currently if you want if you want to look at the, the the modules you can go to the to the folder in which they 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 live and yeah you can look at them you can open them and interact with them but uh, a big problem that we have right here is that we we don't know or there's no easy way of knowing which module connects to another so let's say that we have this 180 module and when we look at is or its imports and its outports we don't know which other modules from here uh, it can connect to so ideally we will have a, a a tool that will you know we would we would select a, a module and the tool would tell us, okay, at the bottom, those are the pieces that can connect to this module, and uh, these are the, the uh, these other pieces are the ones that connect uh, at the top. 
So it, so after making, let's say we want to make a new, a new module. Um, after we create it, we, we can uh, immediately see how, how that new module fits in the game and how, um, yeah, how, how the modules combine with, uh, with each other. Okay, so that's the second, no, yeah, that's the, that's the third one. So th those three we, we will for sure do. Um, there is, yeah, the, 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 the fourth thing, and this is just, uh, just something, uh, uh, that I, that I, that I, I saw a video today and I wanted to try it out. Is I, I just want to do a, a, a bit of touch up to the, to the crystal. So th there is a there is a thing with the crystal right now, which I which I don't uh, which I don't like, but I had no idea how to do it um, before seeing this uh, this video that I talk, uh, talked about. So okay, here you have the the crystal. It all looks fine, but when you uh, decrease this percentage, I mean it does what we want. The the, the problem that, uh, that 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 it has is when you look at from a bit of, uh, from a bit uh, a bit from above i expect there to be like you know the, the the shape to be filled in some way so i expect there to be like a color here that comes from the inside of the of the crystal but there's not so i expect like to be a plane you know i don't know how to explain it exactly and uh, yeah i've just uh, i've just saw how how we could kind of cheat and make uh, and make this um, and make this work. So we're gonna try to do that at the um, at the at the end of the stream. But uh, that is uh, that is dependent on um, how long it takes us to to make this tower modules inspector. We'll we'll see. Okay. But first, uh, yeah, we're gonna start with uh, with this one. So let's start the uh, the uh, the, tr uh, the tracker for the time. And uh, let me show you exactly what uh, what this uh, task is all about. So let's uh, yeah let's choose the the 180 inspector or the module. So uh, yeah so we have this path. So we have one path for the for this module. All is good. The the, the thing that we don't have actually let's enable gizmos as well. I, I think that we we we, we can do and it's not necessarily correct or it or, or it more, more exactly it won't work in the in the game if we look at the waypoints or no uh, yeah if we look at the waypoints we have those so so currently this path is defined by two points the 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 the, the initial point or yeah the initial point and the end point so those are the the, the two waypoints that we have and yeah, they all look fine and all, but um, the, the way the, the, the modules are defined, uh, you have to specify uh, for the module uh, how many imports and outports there are on the module. Currently for this one, there is only one import and one outport. This is uh, the bottom, this is the import and at the top is the outport. Um, and uh, on top of that, uh, even though this is an angle, or so you have a slider to select the angle, we don't allow any angles here. We only have a, a, a limited number of them. So you have only a couple of choices for, for choosing the angle. You know, there are, yeah, there are only a couple of, uh, of, uh, of possibilities for this. And that's, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. But uh, what, what is, um, or what's not working as we would like it's on the path where the, the 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 angle of the initial point and the last point they can actually be uh, whatever we want. So even though those two waypoints should match with the in and out ports of the module, uh, from the from the settings here from the inspector we can actually set them to be whatever we want, and that's not necessarily okay because the, the the level designer has to um come and be careful to choose exactly the the right you know the right value 
so that this path matches with the with the output. So that's that's not that's not cool. We would like this to be a a painless ex experience. So what we are going to do is for the for the first and last waypoints in in a spline, we will also apply that that rule that we only have. Uh, I don't know. I think there are six uh, uh, possible angles that we can set this to. So that's what we are going to do. Okay, so let's look at that. Um, I have a slight idea of how I can do this. I'm not entirely sure yet, though. So yeah, let's go. Let's go to the tower. Let's go to the module, and we have to go to tower module data. So here we have the port. No, uh, yeah. So so here we have the tower module data exactly. This is. What we have for 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 the tower module data, but we actually we want to go to to the spline, and I don't know where. Yeah, there is a folder for splines, and yeah, here is where we want to be. If you look at the waypoint, we have an angle. Um. And yeah, this is the. Those are the the, the values that we have. Now. The thing is, um, we only want to apply this this rule to the first and last waypoint, not to all of the waypoints. So yeah, we'll have to see how we can do that. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how we can do that. So we'll have to see. Yeah, so Okay, okay. Um I said I, I was going to go for. Uh, I was going to go shopping, but I didn't say it, that I was going to go at two o'clock. I said that until at two o'clock there is a 100% chance of raining, but that doesn't mean that at two o'clock I'm going to go get bread. Yeah, I didn't see the chat. I mean, I was focused on the on another monitor, so I didn't have the chat in my in my view. Okay, so yeah, going back to this. Um, what do you mean I'm not working? I am working. I'm working on the game. What does that even mean?
Um, what the hell is this? What? What? <laughs> the f what the hell is that? C sharp array. I don't know if I can use this with Unity though, but damn. I had no idea we, we had this. That's interesting. I'm not going to change it though, because I, I don't. I mean, no, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm going to leave it like this for now, at least. I have to check if if it's okay with uh, with Unity. I mean, um, C Sharp um, has this feature, but I don't know how it uh, works with with Unity, and I don't know maybe like. Uh, IL to CPP or something. I assume it's implemented, but I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, so going back to this, we... Yeah, there, there are, those are the waypoints that we have to take care of. You know what? Let's try to do it here. Um, and it's probably not going to work, but uh, but let's try it. So uh, I think I'm. Oh, there are actually eight uh, eight possible positions that we that we have. Anyway, uh, I'm going to put this in a constant. I think. Okay, so public um, constant um, Uh, I think I don't need the, the static because I put it as a const. Let's use this here. And let's use it in here, I guess. So what we have to do is say w dot Yeah, we need to get the uh, we need to get the angle. We What do we need to do? We need to get the angle, we need to divide it by, um, let's call this step. Uh, so 360 divided by port dot this. So divided by step. Um, we are going to say round 
uh, just round actually, and then multiply by step. Yeah. And the angle is a uh, let's load to int this. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think we can make this a const as well. So, it's going to be equal to this. So, port dot port step. And yeah, actually, this has to be a Load that's the, that needs to be an F or not. Okay, never mind then. But how do I make this stop then? Okay, never mind. But I, I want this to be okay. Let's cast it as a float. Okay, that should do it. Let's try it. I, I don't think it's gonna work, uh, but we shall see. Yeah, ideally I would clamp this only when I finish changing the value. Right now I'm clamping it. Uh, every time it's changed, even though I'm still changing it, you know. Hmm. I mean, Hmm. Let's look, maybe, maybe Odin has something, Odin Inspector. Never know what you can find in, in Odin. So let's look at the attributes. What is this?
I actually don't know how to do this. I mean, actually, no, I do have an idea of how we can do this, but that seems a little bit over engineered. So, one, one thing that I can do is. Um, I mean, you know, uh, uh, wait like 500 milliseconds after the value is changed. And if the value is not changed in that time, then do the clamping. But it, if it was changed, then just reset the timer. Uh, and to do that, we would need, yeah, we need something to do that for us. Uh, what's this? Um, yeah, I would have to use, um, what is that called? Um, We have to use this chat editor core routines. But actually, oh, I don't think we can even do it. Can I use editor core routines, but not from a owner? Uh, maybe I can use, okay, maybe this might work. Um, oh, wait. Dang it. This is exactly what we would need. The wait for seconds. And that's exactly what we don't have. Hmm. That's not cool. That is not cool. We have maybe like a... Oh okay. yeah, that's what I was looking for. Ah, god damn it, even though it's you have a newer version. We still don't have this. Wait. This version includes this. Wait, what? Either wait for seconds. Oh, Okay, okay. Maybe there is uh, there is some hope for this. Let's try it. Let's try it. Because I don't think there there's another way of doing this. Unless I do the same thing that I did for the tower module and get a, get a slider for this, but I don't think I want a slider. Um, does the slider? Oh, maybe we can use it though. 
I was thinking maybe I don't I don't want the slider, but but we do have we do have uh, an input here, so we can so we can input the data. Hmm. Oh yeah, but we can't actually use it because uh, we only want this behavior for the for the first and last waypoint, not for all of the waypoints. Yeah, that's that's another problem. Yeah, let's try it with the is, it the, is there any way of, don't think so. Not without reflection and I don't want to do reflection. I was thinking maybe I could have a, uh, A variable here that would tell me if I'm the first or the last waypoint and based on that change this step range attribute to to apply this um, this mechanism or not but yeah no yeah let's try it with the the editor coroutines um, Yeah, perfect. You're telling me to. Um, I think the name of the package was in here somewhere. I think I saw it. Or did I not? Uh, never mind. It's in the URL, right? Oh yeah, here it is. Or it's in a, a URL. Okay, let's try to install this and see. If we can do anything with it, uh, let's discard the changes for now. So let's see, package manager, uh, add from add package by name. Yeah, come on, package by name, add. Okay, we have editor coroutines. Cool. Now let's try to do something with it. Let's see how let's see how it works. So here we will need my enumerator. Um Waypoint change coroutine, let's say Not engine. Um, yeah, let's look at the documentation actually. Okay, so we need editor curating utility. Do we need to import something? Uh, yes, we do. We need this and I guess editor as well. Actually, no, I don't think we need the editor. We only need this. So let's do that. Let's say if Unity Editor import this and he doesn't know what this is. That's right. That is right indeed. We need to go to 
Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Runtime might give. Uh, actually, I don't want it in runtime. That's not cool. Huh. Well, now, what do we do now? What do we do now? So I don't want to, I don't want to add this assembly to the, to the runtime assembly of the project. Ideally it'd be, it would be in the editor. But at the same time, I need to use it in this class. We can make it partial. So what do I do? Hmm. What do I do? I do have another solution for this, but it's not pretty. But I don't want to do it like that. I mean, it's very hacky. So I can't use editor core routines. Do I have an on update? I don't think I have an on update on, on the spline, right? No, I don't. And then again, I don't have anything related to Unity. Uh, well, except for the gizmos, but we don't care about the gizmos. Which gives me an idea. I have an idea of how I can do this. Okay. Yep. I know how to do this without coroutines. And it's a less of a hack. Okay. So let's do this. Um, execute always. Or no, uh, execute in, in edit mode. So that's the first thing. The second thing, we're gonna have a private int waypoint version, which is gonna be zero by default waypoint. Uh, let's put it right here. Let's remove this, and after we change that, we're gonna we're gonna increase this value. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this, and all the other stuff. And now, what we can do 
is uh, let's put it in a good way yeah okay let's put it let's put it here I'm gonna do an update if it's playing we're gonna return because we don't care and here what we are going to do here is actually yeah no we need to do it we need to do it in on update Okay. And now here we say if this is equal to the previous, we're going to return. But if they're different, uh, previous is going to equal this. And we are going to snatch this code, paste it in here. And we're going to do the magic with the angles. So we're going to get the angle. We're going to divide it by port dot port step. Wait, no. Kind of. OK, yeah, we, we only need the timers, but yeah. So we need the angle. I said we are going to round to int this. We are going to multiply by um, port dot port step. And actually, that's it. And let's do the same thing here for this other uh, waypoint. OK. And now the last thing that we need is private uh, float. Um, let's set this as actually no, let's. Let's put, let's make a time and this is going to be 500 milliseconds. Um, 500 milliseconds and it's going to be equal to this and it can't be, let's make this a const. This needs to be F like this. Okay. So now what we're going to do is that here after we increment. Oh, actually, we don't need the version. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need the version. Yup. Anyway, yeah, we're going to we're going to do this here. And in here we're gonna do so if uh, this is less than zero return we're gonna do this minus equal time dot delta time and if this is now less than zero we are going to do this so if we just switched from positive to negative, we're going to do that. And because of that check, we actually don't need the waypoint version. We only need this debounce time. Like so. And now, actually, the last thing that I need is I want a breakpoint here. We need to attach the debugger and Hey, 
Hey, thanks, Motion. Yeah, I'm not actually looking at that chat too much. I don't know if you just wrote that or you wrote it uh, a while back. Uh, let's remove this actually because we don't need editor coroutines, at least not right now. And reload faster. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to a module. Let's go to the 180 again. We got the hit. So now what I'm expecting to see is I can change this however I want. And after, well, that was, yeah, after a while it just snaps into place. Well, actually I'm gonna make this uh, this time. Let's, wait, those, those are 50 milliseconds I wanted. 500 milliseconds, yeah, my bad. Yeah, that feels better, I guess. So I can change this like so. And then we stop and it snaps into place. Actually, you can kind of feel those 500 milliseconds. You might do it. What? What? I feel like some things are not being uh, updated. I think I'm going to do this after this. So after we update the waypoints, we're gonna we calculate the lengths and we calculate the cache. Because I feel like that's not happening actually. There we go. That's somewhat better. Okay, let's go back to to some. Zero, let's say we go to Okay, so forty five. If I go a bit below forty five, okay that's not right. Why is that? Um because this is this should be a float. Of course. It should be a float. Otherwise, we don't get a float. We get an integer, which is bad because we lose data. Stupid. So now let's go to like close to 45 but below it. Yep, now nah, it's working correctly. Now it's snapping to, to the correct value. Cool. Uh, 
Nice. Nice, nice, nice. What has changed in this, no? In proportion, static shadows. What the hell are those, man? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah. Now, now it's behaving like like we wanted to. This won't be called in the builds. With this check, it won't be even called in the. Um, in play mode in the editor so we're actually good uh one last thing uh that i wanted to look at is yeah uh, i'm gonna disable this in play mode so we can't modify the waypoints i mean it won't work to, to modify the, the, the pass during or, or while the game is playing. But anyway, yeah, we should do that. Cool. So now we have this feature. That is neat. Let's uh, let's commit this and get to to the next task. Forty seven forty seven minutes. That's Bit much, but yeah, it was an interesting problem to solve. Yeah, let's look a bit at the. Okay, so we've added those things here. That's fine. Uh, I think I'm going to revert this. Yes, please. Okay, yeah. There's something funky going on with the collaborate window but yeah what can you do but we will get rid of it soon uh, I don't like that why do we have that system there for an obvious reason apparently okay yes reload please yeah we have that disable in play mode we have this that's fine, that's fine, and we have this whole method. Cool, so that's kind of it. Uh, actually, one last thing. And let's see how we can do that. Um, I'm going to do this. Actually, can I... Yeah, I'm not gonna do that here wait oh no uh, not the editor my bad uh, not the engine uh, i mean the editor let's get this and do it here directly so basically after we do those changes i just want to force this component to be dirty so it's taking into consideration when the i mean for the for the save uh for the save system. Okay, uh, let's commit this and get to the next one. So this is a feature, actually, publish. Okay, the next, the next task is gonna be a, a simple one. It's, um, yeah, we need to create a, basically a prefab so let's do that um let's see yeah uh let's discard changes uh let's make it here create empty 
path. Um, we actually we do need to change something though. Uh, I want to get rid of this because I want to nest the, the the line inside of the path. But I want to do this uh, selection base. Yeah, let's do it like that. And compile tool. Ah, oh, he tricked me. Come on. This is a spline. Let's assign this action on change through an exception. Oh, Jolly Reference, not sent to instance. Oh, come on. Don't be silly. You're, you're all fine. Um. Okay, and we need to add this uh, this line. So effects uh, line. With path renderer, and we need to apply this preset. Get plate cache. And okay, we have the line. Yep, it works. Cool. So now uh, we can make this a prefab. We can delete this. So that's kind of it. Um, I'm not going to replace it or abuse it in the already existing modules, or should I? Yeah, let's do it. Let's use it in here. Fortunately, it should be straightforward because I only have to do copy component and then paste component values. And as you can see, it did not work because, because why? Why does it not work? Save, let's get out, let's get back inside and the line is still not there. Oh, it's rendered way, way, way out there. There we go. Okay, now we have to recalculate the cache, I guess. The line render is not assigned, wait, what? Let's save this, let's go in here. Wait, here it's assigned. Oh, I know why, okay. Uh, yeah, save this, sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, now it's fine. Let's save this and let's get to the next one. Yeah, the problem is that, and actually let's rename those so they have the same name. Uh, I only have to, to copy the, the collection, not the whole thing. So paste, save, let's delete this. And it's still way off in the distance. There we go. And we don't have the line. Let's calculate the cache. There we go. Uh, and let's actually do that change here. Let's put this at zero, zero, zero. Save. Uh, let's get back to this one. Let's change this to path one. Save. Back. Combine. This has two paths. That's the first one, and this is the 
I mean, this is the first one, that's the second one. Let's copy the data. Copy, paste. There we go. When it's done, let's do helix. One, two. That's a two, that's a one. Um, yeah, copy and paste, save, copy and paste and save. Actually, no, we have to delete those. Save, and that looks fine. Parallel, another one with two paths. Uh, Right again. Copy and paste and copy and paste. Save. Did it those two and now save. That looks fine. Two more modules. We're almost done. This one has two paths as well. Copy and paste, save. Copy and paste, save. Delete those two. And that looks fine. Actually, this is already set up as it's, as it's supposed to, so we don't need to change anything. Okay. Cool, and now actually let's get back through all of them and just check the in and out ports that are, uh, that are if they're set up correctly. Uh, sure. Parallel looks fine. Let's look at Helix. Helix looks fine. Combine looks fine. 180 and 180 reverse. Yep, looks cool. Okay, let's um Oh yeah. I know why that uh, why why it uh, why it prompts me to save. Uh this would actually be negative here by default because yeah we don't want this to to fire at the beginning so you know when you open the prefab we don't want this to, to fire so when i go in a module yeah now uh we, we don't uh, we don't uh, dirty the, the the prefab anymore and we just enter only when we change the, the path that's when we dirty it okay cool so this is done as well um and of course i forgot to set the time for this but thankfully hmm, 10 minutes 10 minutes for this that sounds reasonable now we're gonna go to so feature. Okay. Now here comes the the big boy. <clears throat> we have to to work on the inspector that I talked about. The for for the modules. So this is gonna be very fun. Um. I have no idea how I want to make it look. I mean, I have a slight idea of how I want to make it look, but yeah, this is going to be interesting. Um, our module and here, let's make a new folder or directory. Let's call it editor. 
Let's make a class. Our hmm, should we call it ins? Yeah, let's call it inspector. Tower module inspector. Sure. Let's clean this up a bit. ESS tower module editor. That sounds right. Copy this. Go in Unity. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Well, now um, let's go to another editor that we have and steal some code. Uh, that's not a bad idea, actually. Uh, well, ah, never mind. I'm gonna move it if I need another editor. Um, yeah, let's go here and see what we need to do to make this work. So, yeah, we'll for sure need this. Uh, to do some of that so, so we can find some references. Okay. Yeah, so let's start by doing this. Is an editor window. Static void init. Window, Tower Module Inspector, okay. Uh, is this what I need? The modules manager? Yeah, this has the list. Okay. Private modules manager, modules manager. Let's actually copy this over. Uh, not actually this part. I go. Let's call this here on on enable. And. Uh, this well, so I think we're gonna split this in in two parts. We're gonna have a sidebar. So we're gonna have, this is gonna be the editor window. And we're gonna have a sidebar on the left. So we're from, from where we can 
select uh, our module. And on the right, um, I think what we're gonna do is have the module in the middle. Something like this. Then at the bottom, we are going to show all of the modules that can connect with the, with the selected one in the bottom part and at the top the, the the same thing but but which which of the modules connect with this one on the top and both the uh, both the the sidebar and the, the top and bottom pieces will be scrollable so yeah and the only thing that we will need actually to, to find out how we can do it um or no yeah no So oh, you know, yeah, let's start with this. So this visual element, we're gonna say name of, yeah, it's gonna be, so this is gonna be sidebar. Uh, it's gonna be, what actually is not gonna be called, cool. it's not gonna be a visual element. Um, gonna be content. And here we're gonna have a scroll view with a name of top connections. Bottom connections. And it's gonna be a, another visual element. Selected module. Um, and yeah, the sidebar is also, it's also going to be a scroll view. Okay. Let's copy this. Let's dump it in here. Yeah, let's also make a style sheet because we for sure need it. Same here, and let's import everything. Oh, my bad. Uh, I should have pasted that there. Okay, and that sh should do it. Okay, let's see if it shows up. So yeah, we have Tower Module Inspector here and we have something here. We, we still have to... to set up those things, but yeah, okay. So we, look, we, have, we have something here. We, we just have to write some, some CSS to make it look uh, as, we, as we need it to. Uh, but uh, I'm going to take a short break, so uh, I'm going to be back in just a moment. So, see you soon. Okay, let's continue. 
So let's write a, a little bit of CSS to make this look a little bit more pretty. Um, yeah, let's just do it. Now. Let's put this at the end at the side. Uh, let's look at the the XML. So okay, uh, first I'm gonna say um. Uh, yeah, um, to say that the flex direction is common, I think. That's the first thing we need to say that our sidebar has a width of, let's say, 200 pixels. Doesn't update apparently. That's not a B. Wait, okay, that's more like, wait, oh no, this has to be, and I don't think we need the 100%, yep, yeah, now it looks fine. We have this scroll view, which is the, the one on the left, and we have this content, which I guess, um, so content, we will need a flex growth of one. And yeah, now it stretches up until the end. That's cool. Let's add some, actually, no, no, we, we, we don't need padding for this. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Um, we are going to have, uh, Both top connections and bottom connections have a let's see. So they'll they'll have a flex growth one. I do want selected module to have a height of also 200 pixels. Okay. And actually we don't need this. Save. Yeah, that one changed because we need to refresh the Need to refresh the, the 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 structure for that to to show up again. But yeah, we we do have it uh, laid out as we as we want. So now all we have to do is implement this um, I think we also need another method. Get, and I think I'm only gonna make this available in the editor. 
We're actually no, let's just keep it like this. Um I think we need to reverse everything. So origin out select, no, origin in select m out length origin in length. It should be out. And that's it. Okay, we have the, the two the two uh methods that we need. And this one this one for sure I'm gonna do it only for the editor. Uh, it's gonna be public because we need this. Power modules. Okay, so what what do we need to do? Um, first of all, um, yeah, let's just do it as void for now. Uh, create. Um, let's see. Create. Uh. Module preview. Now let's try this. Okay, um, we will need tall module data, tall module data, or actually just tall module, I guess. And yeah, we need a way of Um, no, oh, it sounds like something that I that I would need. Read the visual element inspector for serialized oh is this what I want? Not sure. Um
it's creating an editor for the game object and then it's using this to draw that editor which sounds fine but i'm wondering if there's something similar for UI toolkit I think I saw I saw something like somewhere, but it was a while ago. I don't I don't know I don't know where to find it anymore. I don't think I have it saved anywhere. Let me check. Uh, smart inspector, no, or maybe smart inspector. No, it wasn't this. No, not this one. But I think it was something that I researched a while ago. Let's make. Uh, no meta mask, no editor, no game foundation, no. Maybe this, but I don't think so. No more stuff. Okay, no, I don't know where to find that. We're just uh, gonna continue to. Oh, that's a that's a fair question. Maybe maybe we can get something. Though I don't think UI Builder is the correct thing for whatever this dude is trying to do. The custom drawer displaying the UI builder. I need to display an interactive preview. That's sad. Uh, it's sad that they don't, they don't have it yet, but it's okay because we do have this solution. So, cool. There is a slight problem though. Um, actually, Unity Editor, Get Preview. Out of game. Ready to scrum bridge prefab. I said preview. There we go. That sounds like something. Interior for matching asset preview, for instance, ID of assets. D. Get asset preview. You give it an object, it gives you a texture. That's That sounds like exactly what I need. Um, yeah. Now the only thing left is seeing how I can display a texture 2D in an object in UI tool. I took it uh, uh, render texture 2D. How to render texture? Uh, whatever. I guess that's the texture image. Re okay, okay, that sounds fair. I don't know what this is. Snapshot camera. Anyway, doesn't matter. Okay, this sounds like what we need. Uh, this one. Okay, let's try it like this. So, asset preview dot get asset preview. Hopefully, um, we will be able to do it, even though our prefab is actually unaddressable. But we shall see. So, yeah. Uh, um, I'm going to return an image. Our image equals new image. Um, 
return image and they said what uh image dot image equals um asset preview dot get asset preview of our module dot prefab reference and the better I can get with the prefab reference that's not cool that is not cool but a good part well not very nice so that's not that's not very good so what did the game is say or not the game it is saying that I have to load I have to load my, my all my modules in memory in order to get a reference to them so I can use this method which is not cool uh, let's see if we do have something for I mean even the addressable sh it's gonna do the same thing so I don't know what I'm looking for actually Temptation preview of addressable loading. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so we have the image, we have this. Let's do, let's do an if here. Uh, if our module dot Fab dot is done. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? Oh, uh, we don't have access to addressables in editor. Okay, that's fair. So let's go to editor and add addressables and also addressables editor. Like, so that should fix it. And maybe this is gonna work now. Yeah, asset reference, yeah, it cannot be converted. But that's not a problem, because we can do this. So if it's done, we're going to see uh, uh, this dot result. Else, uh, we are going to do our module dot uh, whatever this dot uh, load asset async. And it is a game object. I should add that here. I should add that here. You know what? Um, yeah, this part should be there. The tower module should know how to load this. So let's see how do we do that. Uh, public uh, or should it even be void? No. Uh, public task tower module. Node prefab async.
I kind of need something like this. Except for the fact that this is directly like so. A uh, set result is actually. Prefab. Wait. If it is completed. No. Wait. Oh, that's all that I have to do. Yeah. Prefab is completed. Prefab the result. Now oh, this is a good project. Game object. And if it's not completed, we are going to wait for it to complete. Then we're going to do this. Does this even make sense, actually? If it's not loaded, or if, it, if this is not null, we are going to load this. Then if this is completed, the result is this. If it's not completed, we were wait, we're going to wait for it to complete, and then we're going to see, yeah, no, yeah, that's how we can do it. So now here, what we actually need to do is, let's get this. What we need to do is say tar module dot get prefab async get the waiter uncompleted and we do this. Well, the question is, let's, let's set load. There's not return of value for this. Private set up sidebar. Let's get the root. Uh, Q. Sidebar. And it's going to be a uh, for all view, and here what we're gonna do is uh, say modules manager and tower module and for each for each tower module we're gonna say create module preview. Damn. Our module. Oh no, that's right. No, it's it's correct. This is not this is not an async method. Yeah.
So this is going to be the element and sidebar dot add element. Now all we have to do is after we set the root, we're going to call setup sidebar with the root. Now, hopefully this is going to work and is not going to crash Unity. Very important thing not to crash Unity. Object reference to an instance of where? Why? Sidebar. Can't find the sidebar. Really now. How is that even possible? How can you not find the sidebar? Did know. So this is the root. Ah, right, damn it! Has two children. So how the hell can it not find the sidebar? Is it not called the sidebar? Oh, it is called the sidebar. So what? The name sidebar. I'll try to do the query from here. So this is null. If I remove this, does it? Okay. Apparently, I don't have to specify the that thing. Okay. Let's continue. This is gonna show the error. Whatever. And now the the that is correct. Uh, let's remove the thing. Hello. When we have one picture. That is not ideal. Why do we only have one image? None of the other images have loaded. That's concerning. Let's try it again. Okay, we're here. We have I don't know which what is this? The straight data, the straight piece. Perfect. Is this done? The result? Yeah, we do have a result. Cool. Ran to completion. Cool. Let's go to the next one. What is this? This is the 180 one. And this one, we also have the game object for this. So, what's the problem then? To completion, result and all. But 
module 180. Module combine. Yeah, this looks fine. Ah, there we have them. That's definitely weird. Um, I am, however, going to cache those uh, images. So we are going to have a dictionary here. Private dictionary from uh, our module to texture to D. Uh, uh, image cache. Um, let's clear the cache and now here let's do this uh, so if um, Private, private, yeah, no, yeah, um, uh, um, Contains key tower module. What did I wrote here? Tower module. I don't know what the hell is this. Yeah, not that. Not data. It contains that. We are going to do, or we're not going to do. is equal to image cache of star module and here both this and that There we go. Okay, so we have a cache.
let's say the module. Hey, right, void setup content. No, setup, yeah, setup content. Um, var help connections equals to uh, let's get the root here visual element root so root dot q scroll view um, help connections let's do the bottom connections as well Bottom connections and the actual content, or no, this is the selected um, module. And here we can do selected module dot add create module preview for selected module uh we don't have the root here I and mean, root visual element whatever okay Uh, oh, also uh, this we should clear it before adding it. I mean, well, uh, to be honest, we should actually, yeah, we should not recreate this image every time. We should only reassign the image, but well, it's not that wasteful. I mean, it's going to be wasteful for, for the images above and below, I guess, but. Selected modules. Selected module. This is very interesting. Yeah, that's not the scroll view. That's right. It's a visual element. Probably doesn't why it's throwing the error. Okay, let's try it again. Hello, nice. I wonder if you can uh, send some values to this get as a preview. You know, like a rotation maybe or something. Apparently not really. Uh, let's look at the documentation though. Uh, apparently not. Get me. It does a time of an object. Yeah. Now let's set up, set up the, the top connections and bottom connections as well. Um, uh, 
Let's see. Um, So, selected module, but wait, isn't this where I get that? No, apparently not. Wait, where do I get that though? Oh, from the modules manager, my bad, yeah. Modules manager, get, um, so top connections, next possible modules. For selected module, let's do a for each. Uh, okay. Actually, we need to do something similar to this, except uh, we need to do it in the top container. Now the sidebar and the same thing. Let's get get previous possible modules and put them in the bottom connections. So let's try this. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna work because we need the elements. We need to, to force the elements to be in line. Yeah, there we go. We need those to be uh, horizontally laid out. Whoa. Oh yeah, uh, we have to clear this before. Actually, let's do like a second here where we clear everything. Clear. Connections. Bottom connections. Clear. Okay, let's try again. There we go. I mean, oh, huh. nice. Okay, what else? What else do we need? Yeah, uh, let's see how we can uh, make them be horizontal. I think the only thing that we need to do is go here and change this to row. Yeah, that's much better. So let's see, in the USS here, we need to copy this and we have to see in the top connections in the uh, the content container The X direction is row. There we go. Uh, also, I'd like this to be uh, apparently center is what I want.
the content. Okay, that's not the one. It centered it horizontally. That's not what I want actually. So it's justify content. Yeah. Uh, flex string zero. Uh, but we wanna do um justify. No. Yeah, or maybe justify content space between. Okay, maybe. Um. I also want to do something. So, um, module preview, preview. Let's add some some padding to this. Where's my image? Add class list. Now we should get some padding. There we go. Okay, now this one is centered as well, vertically. Cool. Let's make this way, way smaller. Oh, it does that. I don't like that. One twenty eight is the height. Let's make those one twenty eight pixel height, one twenty eight pixels. Okay, uh, now we have to do some things in here. Uh, let's see. For this, we are going to oh. align items center. And also for the sidebar, align items center. Uh, justify content. Justify content center. No again. Why are those no? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, not directly on the side, but we have to do it. We have to do something like this. So sidebar this justify content center. No, again, it is aligned. I can never remember the, the correct usage for those. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Uh, and actually, instead of space between, I think I want space around. Gonna make this, yeah, it's gonna make this be in the center. And now, if we shrink this, it's 
Jeez. What the hell? Um, flex string, flex basis, 128 pixels. Um, link, I think it's what we need, yeah. How can I make those uh, not shrink? Oh, let's open it again. Nope, never mind. Module preview. It has a height, it has a width. Oh, yeah. Uh, Maybe without this. I still don't know. It's weird here. Uh, let's get those on the module preview. Now it's working. What? Now they're overlapping each other. <laughs> what the fuck? Also, that's not, that's, they shouldn't be padding, this should be margin, I think. Why do we keep scroll view horizontal?
it's working correctly. What the hell? So those are the top correctly, but not those are the bottom. What? Okay, um, UI toolkit space around scroll view. I think we'll have to sell for not using this. Ah, cut them it. I don't really like it. Hmm. Maybe if at least it's they're centered, that will be better. Uh, let's go to the straight piece. Oh, it right, still doesn't work. Okay. That's a problem. Uh, um, then there we go. I can't even center them, that's so annoying. So annoying. But what can you do? I mean, I could put this, I, could, I can not center this. Have it like this. I mean, that would work. Okay, uh, this this could work. Okay. Now let's let's make those those uh, those things more interesting. Um. Um, container, container, element, we are actually going to return a visual element here, and that will be the container, container add image. Uh, var label equals new new label uh, 
and the label is going to have the name um, lower module data dot. Hmm, I don't have a name for this, fortunately. I mean, I can't set up the name actually. Um, Wait, no, never mind. I'm stupid. No, oh, the, the, the tower module tower module data is the logic. So the tower module name is actually the name of the Yeah, that's fine. Label tooltip is also equal to this. Yeah, sure, sign it there. Uh container adds label. Uh, it's by default displayed as flex, but sure. Hey, nice name. It's going to be or no, no, let's just do our module name, replace module minus this with nothing. A nice name. See it. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, let's get rid of this and this. Um, actually, no, that's not what we need. We need to do a line item center, maybe. Yeah, nice. But actually, yeah, no, I need. I need to do something with the label. We're gonna do margin top uh, eight pixels. There we go. Have some space between those. And now, um, uh, 
I'm going to we are going to add two buttons. So var select. A new button. I actually know var actions is gonna be new visual element and we have the first button which is oh no, what's the yeah. Text is gonna be Select and select is gonna do what the image does on click actually, and we are going to remove the functionality from the image. Okay, and action dot add select and now let's duplicate this uh, select uh, let's call it open maybe open and this is not I don't know how to do this. Uh, but I know how to search for, but what I want with this is Let's see actually if it works We should get those two buttons, preferably side by side They're not gonna be by side, yep, thought so um, actions. Nope, no, no, no. Add to class list uh, actions. So it's going to be module preview dot actions. Uh, flex direction is going to be row. So now we should have the buttons uh, side by side. Yep, there we go. Flex grow, flex basis 50%. What's up with the space on the left there? Uh, okay. There we go. Nice. Uh, also, let's duplicate this and add to the bottom as well. There we go. So we have select and open. Can we actually show? Now let's see. Unity docs uh, ping object project panel. This is what we need to do. We need to ping the object. Okay. 
testing one object. Uh, the tower module data, yeah. Tower module, that's it. I was thinking that maybe we need to ping the, the pressure, but no, no, no. We need the tower module. I mean, it's easier this way. Now, if we click on show, there you go. Cool. And this, yeah, show. If we can select it. <laughs> I actually don't like this, but ah, it's another big problem. Actually, oh, there is something I'm gonna do. Actually, um, let's see. This. I uh, will do a line items flex end and actually let's duplicate this and bottom align uh, start I was pretty sure this was going to do what I Uh, what? Why? Oh, yeah, my bad. It's actually the viewport that I gotta do this to. And we have to remove those. And it's not a line items, it's just five content. There we go. But they're always in the middle, and those are next to each other. Cool. Awesome. And I think with we are uh, we are done with the editor. I think this is everything that we need for the editor. Let's let's see what size this is. Because I'm gonna make it so it Start with this size. I think I can start with this size by default. Uh, we'll see. Uh, what's the dimensions of this? Actually, let's first check that I can do it. Uh, actually, no, I don't think I can. Unless I make it entry size i think I, I i wanted to do or no i think i have minimum size yeah i mean size new vector two um uh, let's say 760 by 660. Now when I open it, I should have a min size for this. Mm -hmm. 
me open it. I can still resize it, but there is a minimum size. And actually, be Let's put it at 700 and see what, what this does. I have to reopen it. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Okay, so that's it. Now let's do a. Uh... A very small thing. Um, uh, select set enabled and selected module is not equal to power module. That's just a small thing. We'll just disable the, the button for the modules that we're actually displaying. So yeah, let's open it again. So now if I select this, on the left it doesn't, but in here, yeah, can't I can no longer select this. And yeah, that's a good idea. Let's let's change the side panel or the sidebar. Let's set up the bar again. Uh, let's do here sidebar clear actually. So after we click on this, we are gonna set up the sidebar and also set up the content. And in here, guard a border width, I'd say one pixel. Uh, border color um, this and actually let's put two pixels and border radius two pixels and those are pixels so here we're gonna say L no. If selected module is equal to tower module, L dot add class list selected. And actually, we're gonna, do a, we're gonna need to do a trick. Nice. Uh, we need to do something here though. Uh, first of all, uh, on the tower, on, on here we have a margin. Let's also add a padding. Or actually, let's split uh, the padding and the margin, or the margin into margin and padding. That's one. Second, we're gonna copy those things, and we're only gonna do the color selected.
I wonder why there's so much space at the top there, though. Oh, let's let's force the image to be yeah because of the width and padding and that. Um, let's force the image to be one twenty. Uh, well, that's cool and not cool at the same time. Uh, then let's do. Don't have box sizing. Hmm. Don't have box sizing, which means uh... Uh, we'd have to take into account uh, the 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 blur as well. Yeah. It's actually an eight here. One forty-eight. There we go. That looks better. Nice. So I think we're done with the with the editor now. I think everything that I needed from this it's it's here. You you can look at the module. Um, Actually, I think there's one thing that I would like to do. Now, let's just do it like this. Yeah. yeah. If we need it, we're gonna add it in the future. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so this is it. This is the editor. Now, we... When we add new um, new modules, we will be able to to debug them and see how they connect to the rest of the tower. Because ideally, we would, we would need to have um, or not ideally, but it, it it's a requirement actually. For for each module, we need to have at least a, a, a bottom connection and a top connection. Otherwise, if it doesn't have a bottom connection, that piece of the that module won't be used ever because it won't come up in when when we generate the tower. And we and we, if we don't have a top connection, uh, the the, uh, the 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 builder, the tower builder, will get stuck because it won't have another piece to put on top of the the, the selected one. So yeah, this will be a, an easy way to to test this, to get to get a module and see see how it fits with the with the others. Cool.
that's it. Let's the timer for this. One hour and forty five minutes. That's that's cool. Wait, 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 is this error? A parsing error? Why? Oh no, never mind. Uh, it's not the... That's, that's something else, that's from before. Yeah, cool. Publish. Okay, now the last thing that we're gonna do, because I wanna, I wanna have a little more fun. Uh, we're gonna do this uh, this task with the with the adjustment to the crystal. So, yeah, uh, improve the crystal a bit. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's start a timer. And where's my tower? Here's my tower. Where's the crystal? So this is the crystal. And what we're going to do is actually duplicate the sphere. Yeah, we're going to duplicate the sphere. No, all this crystal. And this crystal, so crystal container and crystal. Uh, we are going to have this is going to be crystal, yeah, no crystal, that's correct. Let's make another, um, let's see, let's make another material. Tower, crystal container, material is going to be transparent. It is not going to receive shadows. No, we don't need shadows for this. Let's put that there. Um, yeah, let's make this uh, semi-transparent. Let's make this crystal inside a little bit smaller. So let's do a 0.8 maybe. maybe. A little bit bigger, 0.9. Okay. Um, particular highlights, even yeah, that's, that uh, those things we need and we want. Let's do emissions baked. No real time. Wait, no, actually no, no global illumination. Uh, let's do white. Uh, well, actually, no, never mind. Let's not do emission. Just let's just have it like this. Let's have this at 25. So this is how it looks now. Uh, we are going to do this. Save. And now let's edit the shader. Uh, let's put it here, actually. So this unlit color we're going to, we're going to rename, and we're going to say this is the top color. Um, lit color, top color, lit color. Uh, yeah, we are going to remove this. The lead color is going to be a uh, side color.
uh, wrench. If it's the front face, uh, we are going to render this. If not, we are going no. We are going to render the color. Actually, let's move those uh, about here. And this goes to the base color. Uh, graph settings. We are going to render both sides or both uh, the outside and the inside. And it's works. This doesn't really work. Let's do it opaque. No, we no. Actually, no. It had to be. It has to be. Um, no, it has to be. It has to be transparent. Wait. Then why doesn't it work? Oh yeah. Of course it doesn't work. Uh, this has to be the. Let's let's add a, a red color for the. Oh my god, this is so weird. It's random. It's rendered so weird. Uh, let's add a, a, a simple sphere. I just want to see the difference between this and sphere. Let's add the same material to the sphere. Oh, this is, this is fucked up as well. What? The internet lied to me. I really thought this was going to fix it, to be honest. I mean, not fix it, but do the effect that I wanted. This is front face. Hmm. That's not cool. That is not cool. What? This doesn't work either? Wait a second. Okay, now I'm confused. Now I am confused. What the hell is going on here? Why does it look like shit? I thought the problem was this, but apparently it's not.
So I can display the back face. I can display the back face. That looks fine. I can display the front face. Still looks fine. But I can't render them both. Because then it, it goes... What? Why? <laughs> Ah, well, this is annoying. Uh, sad. Um, let's watch the video again. Make sure I did. Uh, I don't think that the dude did different than than me. Is the the position that he has? Because I'm the the object position and he's saying no it's actually the world position and then you subtract the object position or something and he uses whatever the result of this is. I'm really sure that's not not uh, and that's not our problem. Yeah, doesn't change anything. I mean, it makes it kind of worse, but yeah. He was saying regarding this it was that and actually i can try it but i think my the, the, my method it's it it also works yeah 
Uh, oh no, no, that's the. I mean the priest. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. I understand now. So my version with the space being in object space makes it so that it's it it uh, respects the, the the rotation of the object. His version which is world space minus the position of the object uh, actually um, makes it so you it doesn't matter the rotation but given the fact that we we never want to say this doesn't really matter or at least not we might rotate it uh, you know on the y-axis but not on the other axis so it doesn't really matter which which version we use um, There is one thing that I can try. Um, I would have loved if I was able to pour this uh, render space. Or actually, can I? Nope. Or maybe here. Nope. Would have loved to be able. Oh, oh, allow material override. I think that's. I think that's gonna do it. Hell yeah! Now I do have a solution for this. I do have a solution. Uh, so let's try it. Let's duplicate this. Uh, this is inside. We are going to do, we're going to render the back. This, oh, uh, we need to deploy this. Uh, this is going to be the, it's going to render the front. This is going to be slightly smaller. Right. Oh yeah. Um This has to be like this actually. We do that. The result of this goes in here. And oh, shit, no. And this goes into base and this goes into this split. Was that actually the problem that I had? If I do both now, is it going to work? Of course not. Why would it work? Why would it work? I mean, it does something. Not necessarily what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do.
Okay, so now it's rendering this correctly. The problem is that the, the inside is rendered on top of that. Um, hello. I don't know, this actually can be the same size. They won't collide with, in, with each other. Oh yeah. I mean, I do have two materials for this. That's not that cute. It works. Now, the only thing left to do is we need to change a script, which script is the question. Uh, I think the tower health, tower health data, crystal render, crystal, uh, crystal in render. Duplicate this. Okay, let's try it now. Actually, let's uh, let's nest those. Yeah. It's inside. Let's set those to two point five. Now, try it in the in the editor. Let, uh, I mean, in the in the game. Let's see how it looks now. It should look better. Um, it's gonna look better when we actually set everything up. Uh, we need to go to the tower health and assign the other renderer. Oh, let's play now. Hey, let's go. Let's go to the top. Let's actually maximize this. Ah, uh, well. I wish I could say it looks good, but something doesn't look good. Uh. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, fair point. Uh, this crystal and crystal inside. Let's play now. 
If that the third time is the charm. Should be fine now. Let's damage the tower a bit. Hopefully we have a way of damaging the tower. Yes, we have. Hell yeah. Let's actually do it again. Let's maximize. Nice. This looks cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. I think I'm going to enable shadows for this though. I don't like the shadows. I mean, they, they, I mean, they, they are cool, but uh, because the object is actually transparent, so the shadows don't actually make sense, you know. And I might even one up that and actually add a source of light inside the inside the crystal, but uh, for now I think it's okay. We'll do a... Cool! Let's wait for some enemies. There we have them. Let's watch it closely. Nice. Nice. It works. Cool. So this is done. Two. About half an hour. Nice. Yeah, so let's uh, let's commit this. Fish. Cool. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna end the stream here, and we're gonna continue next time with with the 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 test that we have. There are two. Two bugs uh, that we need to do, and we need to create uh, a new weapon, which is the spear weapon. And also, there is another thing that we need to do for the um, uh, for the tower modules, but that this is not that important right now. the The most important thing we, we we've done today, uh, one of them being this editor for 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 seeing for for debugging uh, modules. This is gonna be very handy when we when we start uh, making uh, you know a lot of modules because we'll have probably gonna have tens of modules hopefully we'll, we'll, that's that's my idea maybe maybe we're gonna have like 100 modules that would be that would be ideal it would make the the tower very very interesting uh, at, at each run, but there is one thing that I'm that I, that I want to check though. Um,
Oh, okay. Apparently they do have a cache. Yeah, it doesn't matter that much. I mean, it slightly matters. No, 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 our cache is... Our cache is better. In... Where is it? This... No. Yeah, 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 I think we'll have to get rid of our cache. I think we'll have to get rid of it. Uh, yeah, but that's not a big problem. At least not for now, we'll see in the future. Uh, yeah, what I was trying to, to look for was... Ah! I want to copy that. What is actually the same thing? Um, Whoa, what the hell is this? I have no clue what this is. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I was trying to see if we could uh, maybe render the 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 gizmos as well, because those ports, uh, those in in and out ports, would have been useful to see. In the preview, but that's yeah, not a that's not a very important thing. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stop the stream here. We're gonna continue next time with uh, with those two with those two bugs that I talked about and happen, and probably some other things. We'll see. But for now, uh, for now we've uh, we've done what I what I intended for today. So yeah, we we are we are good for now. So yeah, um, thanks for uh, thanks for being here, and see you next stream. So bye bye.